Hello everyone. I'm Mohammed Hamama, and welcome to your ASCP preparation camp. Today, we'll dive deep into the fascinating world of clinical enzymes. These tiny molecules are crucial in diagnosing diseases, unraveling mysteries, and guiding patient care. Why are serum enzymes like secret agents? They're the undercover messengers of tissue damage. When a cell gets hurt, these enzymes spill into the bloodstream, leaving behind vital clues. We'll decode their messages together. From creatine kinase to gamma glutamyl transferase, we'll explore their superpowers and how they help us detect conditions like muscle disease, liver damage, and even cancer. But wait, there's more. We'll dissect the science, discuss diagnostic windows, and uncover the hidden gems in enzyme testing. So, grab your lab coat, sharpen your pencils, and join me on this enzyme-filled adventure. Let's unlock the secrets of ASCP together. But first, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, activate notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. This helps us reach more medical laboratory scientists. Let's start with the basics. Enzymes are specific biological proteins that act as catalysts in biochemical reactions. This means they speed up reactions without being consumed or altering the equilibrium. Essentially, they help convert reactants into products efficiently. These enzymes are crucial for numerous bodily processes, including carbon dioxide hydration, nerve conduction, muscle contraction, nutrient degradation, and energy utilization. They're like the tiny superheroes in all our body tissues. After cellular injury or degradation, enzymes can appear in the serum, making their measurement a useful tool for diagnosing specific diseases or physiological abnormalities. Certain enzymes, especially those involved in blood coagulation, are specific to plasma and are found in significant concentrations there. By measuring these levels, doctors can gain insights into various health conditions. Enzymes are built from amino acid sequences forming their primary structure, which then folds into unique shapes known as the tertiary structure. Some enzymes also consist of multiple polypeptide units, forming a quaternary structure. The active site within an enzyme is where substrates bind, creating a specific chemical environment for reactions to occur. Interestingly, enzymes can exist in different forms within an individual, contributing to diversity in their properties and functions. Additionally, non-protein molecules called cofactors, such as coenzymes, are essential for enzyme activity. Some enzymes are secreted in an inactive form, known as proenzymes or zymogens, and are later activated through structural changes. This activation is crucial for regulating their function. To standardize enzyme names, the Enzyme Commission, EC, system was developed. This system assigns a systematic name based on the substrate, reaction, and coenzyme involved. Each enzyme is identified by a four-digit EC code, with the first digit indicating one of six enzyme classes. 1. Oxidoreductases, which catalyze oxidation-reduction reactions. 2. Transferases, facilitating group transfers excluding hydrogen. 3. Hydrolases, catalyzing the hydrolysis of various bonds. 4. Lyases, removing groups from substrates without hydrolysis, resulting in products with double bonds. 5. Isomerases, converting geometric, optical, or positional isomers. 6. Ligases, joining two substrate molecules and breaking pyrophosphate bonds, like ATP. Factors affecting enzyme concentrations in blood. Leakage of enzymes from cells. Enzymes are normally kept inside cells by the plasma membrane. This membrane's integrity depends on ATP production. When ATP production is impaired, due to a lack of substrates or reduced oxygen, the membrane gets damaged. Cellular damage progresses through several stages. The early sign is the efflux of potassium and the influx of sodium, causing cell swelling. In more serious stages, calcium enters the cell, stimulating intracellular enzymes and disrupting the membrane. Free radicals formed during these processes can cause further damage. When the membrane becomes leaky, 
irreversible injury leads to cell death. Initially, small molecules leak out, followed by larger ones like enzymes and proteins. A significant drop in ATP levels triggers substantial enzyme release. Increased enzyme activity in extracellular fluid or plasma is a sensitive indicator of cellular damage. This can be caused by conditions like ischemia, myocardial infarction, and liver sensitivity to hypoxia. Skeletal muscles, liver, and other tissues also contribute enzymes to the blood. Factors like infection, inflammation, drugs, and alcohol can cause enzyme leakage. Efflux of enzymes from damaged cells. Enzyme release from damaged cells depends on the concentration gradient between the cell interior and exterior. Smaller enzymes may appear in the extracellular fluid earlier due to diffusion. Transfer methods, whether direct capillary passage or lymphatic transfer, vary by tissue type. Mitochondrial enzymes indicate irreversible cellular injury. For example, during a myocardial infarction, these enzymes are rapidly transferred to the circulation. In chronic liver disease, ongoing enzyme release and altered enzyme synthesis occur. Liver cell GGT activity is mainly on exterior surfaces. Ectoenzymes may elute due to bile salt accumulation without involving increased membrane permeability. Altered enzyme production. Under normal conditions, small amounts of intracellular enzymes are naturally present in plasma due to cell wear and tear or leakage from healthy cells. Enzyme production can be decreased due to genetic deficiencies, like hypophosphatasia, or disease-related factors. For instance, liver disease can depress cholinesterase production. More interestingly, enzyme overproduction can occur. Growing children have increased alkaline phosphatase due to active osteoblasts, and enzyme induction can happen with drug administration or ethanol intake. Enzyme Kinetics Catalytic Mechanism of Enzymes A In any chemical reaction, reactants need enough energy to overcome an energy barrier known as activation energy to form products. Enzymes play a crucial role by lowering this activation energy, making reactions happen faster and more efficiently. Enzymes bind substrates at their active sites, forming what's called the enzyme substrate complex, or ES. This complex reduces the energy needed for the reaction to proceed. The general progression of this reaction can be summarized as, where E represents the enzyme, S is the substrate, ES is the complex, and P is the product. Enzymes exhibit remarkable specificity in their actions. 1. Absolute specificity. Some enzymes only work with one particular substrate and catalyze a specific reaction. 2. Group specificity. Other enzymes interact with substrates that contain specific chemical groups, like phosphate esters. 3. Bond specificity. Certain enzymes are specific to particular chemical bonds. 4. Stereoisomeric specificity. Some enzymes preferentially bind to one optical isomer of a compound. Additionally, enzymes can exhibit cooperative binding, meaning they can bind multiple substrate molecules. This binding can facilitate further binding of additional substrate molecules, enhancing the enzyme's efficiency. Factors that influence enzymatic reactions. First up, substrate concentration. The rate of enzymatic reactions depends heavily on how much substrate is available. At low concentrations, substrates easily bind to free enzymes, and as more substrate is added, the reaction rate increases. But there's a limit. Once all enzyme molecules are bound to substrates, adding more substrate won't increase the reaction rate. This is called substrate saturation, and the reaction rate becomes zero-order kinetics, dependent only on enzyme concentration. The michaelis menten constant, or Km, represents the substrate concentration at which the enzyme reaches half its maximum velocity. The michaelis menten hypothesis can be expressed with the equation, where V is the reaction velocity, Vmax is the maximum velocity, S is the substrate concentration, and Km is the michaelis menten constant. Determining Vmax and Km can be tricky from the hyperbolic plot, so scientists use the lineweaver burke plot, or double reciprocal plot, to get a straight line for accurate determination. 
Next, enzyme concentration. The reaction rate of a catalyzed reaction also depends on enzyme levels. When there's more substrate than enzyme, the reaction velocity is proportional to enzyme concentration. More enzymes mean faster reactions because more substrate can bind. Now, let's talk about pH. Enzymes are proteins with net molecular charges, and pH changes can denature them or alter their ionic state. Each enzyme has an optimal pH range for maximal activity, usually between 7.0 and 8.0. In the lab, reactions are carefully controlled at this optimal pH using buffer solutions. Temperature is another crucial factor. Higher temperatures increase reaction rates by enhancing molecular movement in collisions, up to a point. Beyond their optimal temperature, enzymes can denature, losing their function. Most enzymes have an optimal temperature close to physiological levels, but denaturation typically occurs at higher temperatures, around 40 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. Enzymes also need helpers called cofactors. These nonprotein molecules bind to specific enzymes before a reaction can occur. There are two main types, activators and coenzymes. Activators, like metallic ions, can be essential or enhance reaction rates. Coenzymes, such as nucleotide phosphates and vitamins, act as second substrates in reactions. When tightly bound, they're called prosthetic groups. Lastly, let's discuss inhibitors, which can slow down or stop enzyme activity. There are three main types. 1. Competitive inhibition. Competitive inhibitors bind to the active site, competing with the substrate. This can be reversed by adding more substrate. 2. Non-competitive inhibition. These inhibitors bind elsewhere on the enzyme, not at the active site. Adding more substrate won't reverse this inhibition. 3. Uncompetitive inhibition. These inhibitors bind to the enzyme substrate complex, intensifying as substrate concentration increases. Maximum velocity can't reach uninhibited levels. Enzyme quantitation. Enzymes are often present in small quantities in biological fluids, so measuring their catalytic activity is a convenient way to quantify them. This activity is directly related to enzyme concentration. Common methods include photometric measurements of product or substrate changes, often using coenzymes like NADH for assays. To determine enzyme concentrations, we use zero-order kinetics, where excess substrate ensures only a small fraction is converted to product. NADH, which absorbs light at 340 nanometers, allows for easy measurement. In some assays, multiple enzymes are involved. One enzyme's product becomes the substrate for another, and indicator enzymes convert NAD to NADH or vice versa. It's crucial to control variables during these measurements. Inhibitors should be absent, pH should be maintained using buffer solutions, and the temperature should remain stable, usually at 25 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius, or 37 degrees Celsius. Continuous monitoring of absorbance changes during the reaction helps verify linearity. This method ensures accurate quantitations during the linear phase of the reaction. There are two main methods for measuring enzyme activity. One, fixed time method, reactants are combined, and the reaction proceeds for a set time before measuring the extent of the reaction. Two, continuous monitoring or kinetic assay, absorbance changes are measured at intervals or continuously, allowing better verification of reaction linearity. Sometimes, enzyme levels are so high that all substrate is used up early in the reaction, leading to deviation from zero-order kinetics. Continuous monitoring helps detect these deviations. If needed, you can repeat the determination with a diluted sample. Diluting the sample doesn't interfere with the reaction, and saline can be used to minimize negative effects caused by hemolysis or lipemia. However, enzyme activity measurements can be inaccurate if storage conditions compromise protein integrity, enzyme inhibitors are present, or necessary cofactors are lacking. Calculation of enzyme activity. Enzymes are quantified based on their activity rather than direct concentration. Historically, 
different units were used, but now we use the international unit, IU, where one IU catalyzes one mole of substrate per minute under specified conditions. The international system of units, SI, recognizes the cattle, CAT, as the unit for enzyme activity, representing moles per second. Enzyme concentration is expressed as catals per liter, with 1.0 IU equal to 17 CAT. When quantifying enzymes using NADH absorbents at 340 nanometers, the molar absorptivity of NADH is used to calculate enzyme activity. Enzyme concentration can also be quantified by mass using immunoassay methodologies. However, these methods may overestimate active enzyme due to cross-reactivity with inactive forms. Generally, there's a linear relationship between enzyme activity and quantity, but this should be determined for each specific enzyme. Electrophoretic techniques can also quantify enzymes by resolving isoenzymes and isoforms. Ensuring accurate enzyme measurements is crucial, and guidelines like CLIA-88 address quality control and proficiency testing. Enzymes as reagents Enzymes are also used as reagents to measure non-enzymatic constituents in serum, such as glucose, cholesterol, and uric acid, through enzymatic reactions. Immobilized enzymes are chemically bonded to adsorbents for batch analyses. Commonly used enzymes include horseradish peroxidase, alkaline phosphatase, ALP, glucose, 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, G, 6-PD, and beta-galactosidase. In immunoassays, enzymes function as indicators reflecting the presence or absence of the analyte. Don't miss our upcoming video, we will continue with enzymes of clinical significance. If you found this helpful, don't keep it to yourself, share it with friends who might benefit. For more insights, grab our free ASCP short notes linked below. They're perfect study buddies. Have questions or comments? Drop them below. We love hearing from you and aim to answer everyone. Hit that subscribe button to catch our next dive into the fascinating world of science. Thanks for watching.